What's up guys? So today we're going to go ahead and build an Instagram bot. This is going to be a fully featured Instagram bot with things like following users, unliking and liking posts, um, downloading media, whatever the heck uh, you want to do. So we're going to probably add like three or four of those features and potentially progressively add some more features later down the road. So um, let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to be building this with Python 3.7 and we're going to be using Visual Studio Code as our editor. So if you haven't downloaded either of those things yet, go ahead and do that now. Uh, the links for that are in the description. So, uh, okay, <clears throat> let's get started here. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and again, download Visual Studio Code Python 3.7. Um, and then you want to open that up and we're going to create a new folder. So I've already created a new folder, but if you haven't, then what you can do is go here and <clears throat> just click create new folder and you can set it up, name it, whatever you want. Um, Instagram bot or something along those lines. Um, and then once you've got that, we're going to pop in and your window should look like this. You should have the name of your folder here and everything else. So now what you can do is go ahead and we can open up this terminal. Um, this terminal down here is where we're going to be able to run our program after we build it. Um, so we're going to leave that open for now and then we're going to go ahead and create a new file. So we're going to go up to the left here, click on this new file and we're going to call this uh, bot.py. So that's py is the Python extension. So this is a Python file. This is where we're going to write our Python code for this bot. So uh, next thing that we want to go ahead and do here is actually import the libraries that we're going to need to use for this project. So essentially these libraries are external sheets of code where that people have written. We're going to leverage those to be able to build our project uh, a little bit faster. So let's go ahead and import a few. Um, the libraries that we're going to want are going to be Selenium for starters and potentially I think that should be it. I'm taking a look. Yeah, we're going to need Selenium and a couple others here. So let's go ahead and import those now and then we'll download them uh, with just a minute. So in just a minute. So we're going to say uh, from Selenium, we want to import a web driver. Then we want to go ahead and import uh, OS, import time. And I'll explain these a little bit. So Selenium is basically how we're going to actually uh, automate the web browser to do whatever tasks that we need to accomplish. Uh, OS is going to allow us to do some basic folder manipulation, path manipulation on our desktop. Uh, time is pretty self-explanatory. It's how we're going to keep track of time for any time-based operations that we need to complete. And then we've got things like, um, I think that should be it for now. We're going to create our own little module of utility methods that we're going to use to um, add some additional functionality as well to the program down the road. So we'll actually go ahead and we'll create another folder right now, uh, right now as well. We're going to call this one utility methods. And in this utility methods folder, we're actually going to import this into our bot.py file. So that means that any code that we have in our utility method folder, we're going to uh, import into this, into this program or into our main program. It would make more sense to call this main, but for the purposes of this, we're going to call it bot.py. So once we've created that utility underscore methods folder, we're going to go ahead and create another file, which is underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. This is going to indicate to the Python um, interpreter that this is a module that can be imported into our bot.py file. And then we're going to go ahead and add a file in here. And we're just going to call this one utility methods as well. Um, and this is just going to be utility underscore methods dot py. So in here, we're going to create some extra code that are going to be utility methods that aren't going to be directly related to the bot. So we're going to leave that over there. Sorry, I feel like I'm talking a little bit too fast. I'm going to try to slow down a little bit here. So uh, the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is create a class. And this class is, again, a way to encapsulate all of the functionality that we want our bot to have and keep it nice and structured within the actual code so that we can easily um, kind of to create a template for ourselves to think about the program as we're building it, as well as uh, interweave various aspects of the functionality in that class. So we're going to go ahead here and now say class uh, Instagram. Instagram bot 
And essentially, this is how the syntax for creating a class. Again, a class is just a template that encapsulates various functionality that is in some way uh, related. So now we're going to go ahead and create another function in the beginning of this class. And this is going to be def underscore underscore init underscore underscore. Now, what this function is, is this is a function that is called when you create an instance of a class. So to back out for a second, if you guys have heard of object oriented programming, that's essentially using objects or instances of classes to to uh, create um, chains of functionality and accomplish what you want to accomplish. But back to uh, what this init is, so when you create these objects, when after you define your template, you create an instance of the object, which is simple. Well, if you guys haven't done that before, we'll do that shortly. But And then when you create that instance, the code that you put in this init function is what's going to execute. So we're going to go ahead and say def init, and we're going to pass self as the first parameter. And this is so we can actually set various uh, attributes to this class so that they are specific to each instance of that class that we create. Um, again, I know this sounds somewhat abstract, but if you guys stick with me, we're going to uh, we're going to boil down into more concrete stuff here in a moment. So uh, now we want to go ahead and create a username and a password. And so these two things are our parameters, where we're, parameters are essentially a place where we are passing some data. Uh, when we create an instance of this class, we also add some data, and these parameters are going to represent that data, and then we're going to set them within this class. So we're going to say uh, self.username is going to equal username, and self.password is going to equal password. All right. So now we have this, we have now a, cl a class that we can create an instance of, we pass a username and a password. So the reason we're doing this is we want to be able to log in to Instagram. Those are the two kind of required things uh, from, from a user when we, when we want to use a, any kind of a bot. So we're going to go ahead now and uh, we're going to create an instance of this class so I can show you guys a little bit about what we just discussed. So uh, what we're going to do is some more just kind of uh, boilerplate Python syntax. We're going to say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals um, with a double equal sign. And we're going to put, uh, put um, two opening quotes and we're going to put underscore underscore main underscore underscore. Uh, what this is going to do is essentially go ahead and say if this is the file that is executed when you uh, initially run the program. So if I go down here and I say something along the lines of, uh, let me see, if I say Python 3.7 bot.py, that would execute this file and then this if name equals main, any of the code that goes in here underneath it would execute. So again, that's kind of boilerplate Python syntax for your file that you're going to be executing. Um, so now let's go ahead. So if name equals main, we want to create an instance of our class now. So we're going to say, we'll call it, um, we'll do IG bot equals Instagram bot. Um, so that means we're going to create an instance of this class. And then we're going to have to pass that username and password uh, to this class when we're creating this instance of it. So for now, we're just going to put... Um, uh, temporary or temp username these are going to be strings and temp password so again those are going in between um, quotes okay so now that we've got that guys we have our temp username temp password um, these are going to be where your actual username and password will go shortly but that'll create an instance of that class and now we could say something like print ig bot dot username so we can reference this attribute so to give you guys an idea of the flow here uh, we create an instance of this Instagram bot class. We pass username and password with two strings. Um, those will be represented by username and password up here because this function is going to fire when we initialize this class. And then we have this uh, self.username, which will be equal to this, this username, which will in turn be temp username or whatever that string uh, that we pass as the first parameter is. Um, and then we have password, which is going to be uh, password, and it will be right there. So again, now when we say print IG bot dot username, we're referencing a variable that is that uh, assigned to the instance of the class and it's gonna print off this attribute. So now we can go ahead and run this right now and we have no module named Selenium. So what we wanna do here is say um, pip three install Selenium, but I don't know if that's referencing uh, 3.7. So I think, um, I think that command works. Uh, Python 3.6. Okay, so I could go and assign that other pip, but I think we're just going to use 3.6 just to keep it simple here. So we're going to say uh, pip3 install selenium. 
and that's going to go ahead and actually make a call to the internet uh, essentially that will go ahead and grab that package for us download it and then put it in a place where python uh, knows to look for it when we execute this program and it can go and find that package there and import that code into our program so now we should be able to say something like python3 bot.py and we're printing off the attribute from this IG bot class here and you see temp username appears down here. So now let's go ahead and actually add some functionality here. Um, so let's go ahead now and do this. So as far as our initial functionality goes, we know we're going to need to log into Instagram and we're no, we know in order to log into Instagram, we're going to need to use some kind of an internet browser. So what we can do is actually when we create an instance of this class, let's actually boot up um, the browser right then and there. So what we can do here is go ahead and do that. And we can say uh, self.driver. So again, we're creating an attribute that'll be part of this class and that's going to equal um, web driver. So referencing this uh, this thing that we, this uh, class that we imported, or I don't know if it's necessarily a class, but this class that we imported from Selenium. So webdriver.chrome, or no, uh, yeah, it probably is a class, maybe a static class. Uh, webdriver.chrome, and this will go ahead. Oh no, it'll probably build the object. Okay, so webdriver.chrome, and this will. Um, this is where we're actually going to pass something known as an executable uh, file that is for our Chrome driver. So this is where we're going to be able to boot up, <coughs> boot up an instance of Chrome. So in order to do that, we're going to need to download it. And so I'm going to go ahead and find that link for you guys. If you guys are watching this right now, uh, the link will be in the description. All you have to do is download that file into this folder right here. <coughs> uh, download Chrome driver. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this. Um, so this is what the website is going to look like here. Well, I've got a lot going on. Okay. Um, okay, so for Windows, so let's see here. Um, boom, 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 boom. Where's our download? Okay, so we have to see Chrome version. So we can say Chrome um, version. And we are using 73.0. So you guys are gonna to wanna to look right here, see what version of Google Chrome you're using. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. So let's go ahead and download this. We're gonna click this link right here, and then we can download it for uh, Win32, which will be compatible with um, both Windows uh, x86 and 64. So let's go ahead and put that in our project folder here. Um, personal projects, IGBot. All right, and we're going to put that right there. So now, when we go back to our code editor here, we see we have the zip file, and now we can actually unzip the zip file. So, depending on what operating system you use, um, you're using, you're going to have to unzip this in a different way. Um, I'm using Windows, but I have Windows uh, Subsystem Linux installed, which is this terminal that you see right here, which essentially means I can use a Linux based terminal in Windows machine. So, I can go ahead now and unzip, um, I think, assuming that unzip is here. Um, so if you're on Windows, you can use something like 7-Zip to actually install this um, or unzip this. If you're on Mac or a Linux machine, just run it, um, just go ahead and download unzip. You can do it with Mac using uh, the Homebrew package manager. Um, if you Google that real quick, that gives you a one-liner that you run in a terminal that will install Homebrew for you. Then you can do like brew install unzip or unzip may be there by default. I'm not really sure. Um, but for Linux, you could do sudo apt install uh, unzip. So now we can go ahead here and say unzip Chrome driver. And now we can go ahead and we see this Chrome driver.exe file right here. And this is the Chrome driver file that we're going to use to actually um, to actually run this thing here. So to run Chrome. So what we can do now is just remove that Chrome driver win32.zip. Um, so for you guys, if you guys are again on Mac and Linux, this will just say Chrome driver without the .exe. If you're on Windows, we'll have the .exe. So we can go uh, self.driver equals webdriver.chrome, and we're going to pass in that Chrome driver.exe as the initial parameter. 
So that should look right in this directory here, find this Chrome driver.exe and it's going to pass that into this, uh, this function that is on this library that we imported here. And that'll go ahead and create this instance of Chrome for us. So now that we've got that, um, now we can go ahead, we should be able to just run this here. Um, and then we could put something like self.driver.get, which is a, an extension or a, not an extension, but a method um, on this self.driver uh, object that is going to be returned here. And we can say something like HTTPS uh, www.instagram.com and just put that like that. Now, if we run this, it should launch the browser and it should go to Instagram. So let's go ahead and hope it works. Um, I'm going to run this with Python 3. Okay, uh, says that our Chrome driver exe executable needs to be in path. So that means that it's not finding it. Um, it might be, might be able to do this. So we could add it to path here. Um, I've done this before and I don't think, I think this will fix it. There we go. So over here on an uh, other monitor, uh, this launched. So if you guys run this as it is right now, we should launch and we should go to the Instagram page. So we are getting here now. So now we got to think. So what's the next thing we got to do after we get to Instagram? We got to log in. So we got to find this uh, login button. And what's one step better is we can just click this login button and take a look at this URL. And we can just take this URL right here copy this we don't need this question mark source equals off switcher um, that is irrelevant for what we're trying to do here and now we can go ahead and actually just paste this in here and we can go ahead and say self.driver.get we can go right to that url where we need to log in so what we're going to do here is zoom back out for a second and think that this URL that we're going to is actually going to be a, we can think of this initializing Chrome driver and going to this login URL. This could be its own kind of separate logical piece of, of our program. So we're going to create its own function for this and we're going to call this um, just login. So what we can do here is go ahead and say def login, uh, passing self as a parameter. And then what we can do is just leave it like that and when we call this uh, function which we can just call from our init function passing in our uh, username and password um, well actually we don't need to pass that in yet but at some point we're going to pass in our username and password and it's going to populate the form fields to log into instagram with the username and the password so we can say self.driver to get get www.instagram.com back to cancel login so um so now we got to go ahead and we got to pull that up again um, so let's just go ahead and rerun this program. And now we can go ahead and look here. So we have our login. This is the um, URL it should have gone to. Oh, no, it shouldn't have because I didn't add this function. So we want to go ahead and say self.login. And now it's essentially going to create an instance of this class, initialize it with the username and password that we pass as parameters. It's going to go ahead and create an instance of the Chrome driver using the executable we downloaded, and then it's going to go ahead and log in. So uh, let's go ahead and see here. Just got ourselves that login. Good, good, good. Save this and run this again. So here we go. This popped up on the screen and there we go. So now what we want to go ahead and do and do here is actually inspect these form fields and find some kind of unique identifier that we can use with those form fields to be able to populate those with um, our username and the password of the user. So let's go ahead here and inspect. Um, and now what we could do here is just use copy XPath. And what that means is that the the XPath is a, a basically a way to identify an element on the on the um, on this HTML document by traversing down the entire tree. It's kind of like an exact um, exact match for the element here, and the tree is just um, kind of a hierarchy of various HTML elements that make up the page. So we can say copy XPath, and what we can do here is say. Um, self.driver.findElement by xpath and we can pass that xpath um, really uh, let's make sure that ID looks a little questionable there <clears throat> so I think we're going to use a different because um, what I'm wondering is if this these IDs might be generated rather randomly 
So what we need to do in order to make this actually last here is um, find, we can use this, we can use a different function. So we actually can take a look at these attributes. So you can see here that this, um, this, this field right here has all these different attributes. And what we can do is actually use this name attribute, which is pretty explicitly username, then we can find the element by that. So we're gonna do um, self.driver.findElement by, uh, by name. And then we're just gonna put username in here. And that what we can do is then take that field and we can send our our username to that field. So what we can do here is add these parameters. Um, actually, we don't need to. We can do this. Um, self dot driver dot find element by name username dot send keys, and we can send the keys that are self dot username, referencing this attribute above here that was created when we passed this uh, username parameter to our class. And what we can do here is similar. Um, password, assuming that, um, oops, assuming that that this field has, whoa, okay, Peter's going crazy. Um, assuming that this field has has this here, or assuming that the password field has the name of password. Let's take a look here. So again, we see temp username gets filled in here. Um, we can see password. All right, so type password, name password, okay, cool. So what we can do now is just send the keys there and we're gonna send our self.password. So that'll send our password keys to there. And then we wanna go ahead and see, check out this login button. And we have a few classes. It looks like it doesn't have um, a whole, there we go, type submit. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this login text to find this button here. So what we can do is go ahead and do that. Um, we could find it by text. Um, there's a few other logins. So let's see here. Let's try the X path, see if this works. Um, so we can go here and we're just gonna go ahead and actually copy this one by X path. So we're gonna say self.driver.findElement by xpath. Um, and then we're gonna put paste that xpath that we copy there. And then we can just say dot click. Now this is a super long line, which is not not good. Um, but it's for this purposes it'll work. Okay, so self.driver.findElement by name username. So we're sending our username, sending our password, finding the xpath. Um, you guys can see that this Instagram here was built with React, and then we're just sending that uh, password. And so let's go ahead and um, go ahead and run this again, and hopefully this will work here. So these username and password don't work, but if we get to the point where it doesn't work, and it tells us that it doesn't work, then we're doing right. Okay, so here we go. Username, password. Okay, it looks like unable to locate the element. So it wasn't able to find this login button. So let's see um, what we can do here. So, so if that X path didn't work here, let's just see. So that means that at some point um, when that text is being entered, this X path is being changed. So we can just go ahead and look and see that. Okay, so this, if you guys look right here, I just copied the X path again. And we have a we have a different X path this time. And what I think that is is I think, or maybe that's the that's from, that's from the div. So maybe if we click that div, we'll get a better result. So let's try that. So we're gonna add that. So instead of taking this button here, we copy the X path of this div, and we're gonna give that a go. So here we go. Launching. Nope, and unable to locate element. That's interesting. So let's go ahead here and try something out. We can add a time.sleep. And that might have something to do with it. Uh, I'll try one more time here. Oops, I don't think I had to click on there. Dot click. 
And in case you guys were uh, wondering, all <clears throat> all these functions are entirely from um, are entirely from where to go are entirely from the Selenium library, which is pretty neat. It's a very uh, very useful library, guys, and it's used a lot in testing um, testing front end applications as well. So let's give this a shot. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. So it's not being friendly. Um, let's try this. So the prior time um, when I built this, we had this issue. So this is the one that I used the last time. Um, I try to do everything more or less when I'm doing these videos just so I can run into any issues. Um, and hopefully that's a little bit beneficial for you guys. So you guys can actually kind of see what issues you might run into and how you might solve them. So uh, let's go ahead and give this a go. <clears throat> Oops, Silta driver dot find element. And if you guys are wondering these error messages popping up here, I'm looking a lot at these right here. And then we just look back at our code um, and you can fix it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and now we want to rerun this again now that we've fixed that. Hmm, so it's still unable to find it. So now what we can do is we'll use that login text. So we'll say how to select element by text with Selenium XPath. Um, and we can say, so we're using contains text. Okay. So what we can do here is this. So what this is doing here is essentially, it's saying find all the li elements that contain some text. Saying find all the li elements that contain um, some text, and that text is going to be passed here as a second uh, parameter. So we're going to pass um, login, and now find elements, and now we should be able to reference the initial element. So this is going to return find elements is going to return um, an array of elements, and we should be able to reference that initial element. So let's go ahead and give this a go. Um, whoop, 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 syntax errors. All right. Okay. So we actually do need just double quotes. All right. I'll try this again. Oops. Ah. List index out of range. So it wasn't able to find it. Oh, right. Because it's still the li. Okay. So we want div. So, all right, guys, we're getting there. This is this is a fairly long uh, program here, but it should be really good exposure to Selenium, uh, to Python, and if you want an Instagram bot, that as well. Is it really still not finding it? Oh, it did find it that time. Okay. <laughs> If you get frustrated, it almost, uh, if you get frustrated when you're programming, it almost always makes, makes the program work. So remember that, guys. There we go. Okay, sweet. So that is working. So that's good. Um, so now we have a function that can actually log in once we create our instance here. Um, so let's go ahead now and just quickly add some documentation so we can say um, So we're gonna say args for these um, Parameters here. And this is because as our program grows we're gonna potentially forget what these things are So we got to put username and we're gonna put type or colon you guys don't have to do this if you want But it's helpful It'll definitely be helpful if you continue to uh, add to this program so username um, string and this is gonna be the user the um, Instagram username for a user and what we can do is put password here and this will just be the password 
and then we're gonna have um, attributes and this will be uh, driver so this will be a uh, web driver we can put selenium dot web driver dot chrome and this is going to be the chrome driver um, that is used <clears throat> to control let's say automate browser actions all right guys we're about to get into the fun stuff um so this we'll just add a quick oops line right here and we'll say um creates an instance or initializes an instance of the instagram bot class um, calls the login method to authenticate a user with with ig okay there we go looking a little better now all right guys so we got a little bit of documentation here we have our login method set up um, looking good so now we want to go ahead and now we can actually get into like the interesting stuff here so what's the first thing that we want to do um, so let's go ahead and just navigate to a user's profile um, so we're just going to call def nav user um, and we're going to pass a string parameter here which is going to be um, user and we're obviously going to pass self first so let's go ahead now we're going to say self.driver.get um, user but we don't want to just go to the user we want to be able to pass a username to this function and then from there it'll go ahead and navigate to that user's page so what we can do here is just look at this um, so let's go ahead and just see I know you can do like Instagram.com um, we'll look at Tony Robbins okay so what we can do now is we can take this URL right here and we can go ahead and put this URL as a parameter if we want to so we can say self dot uh, base URL is gonna equal this right here Instagram.com and now we can actually just go ahead and do this so we're gonna use this base URL we're gonna take this username that's passed in append it to this to the end of this this string and then that's gonna go ahead and we'll navigate to that as our as our URL and it go right to the users page and from there uh, assuming we're logged in from there we'll be able to take actions so let's go ahead here and do this so first off we're just gonna do a tiny little bit of refactor and we're gonna say E counts, A counts. Um, and we can go ahead and do this. We can say, um, we can do this, and we can do dot format self dot base URL. And we won't need that. So essentially, we're just refactoring a tiny bit here, guys, just to keep things a little bit neater. And we can go ahead and say self dot driver dot get. Um, a string and this is called string interpolation when you see with these little um, two squiggly brackets within the string here and what that does is we can actually just inject variables into a string and the program will interpret that as a string so we can go ahead and put this um, I think you can do or just not just variables expressions I think so we can go ahead and do um, self dot base URL here dot format um, nope Oops, I'm messing up, guys. So we actually just want to format the base URL, and we don't need to put this base URL. We could put that there and then name it in the format function, but we're just going to do this, and then we have that. Um, then we have that. We should just be able to add. We can just add that to the end right there, and this will be. Uh, we'll put another one. So we're actually going to uh, you we're going to use string interpolation with two variables so essentially each one of these brackets here is going to represent each parameter that we pass in order in this format function so we're going to go ahead and put um, self dot or no we're just going to put user right there so now we're going to go ahead this is basically saying something like this self dot driver dot get um, whatever our base url is instagram.com and then whatever the username is so we could say something like B, and this will be the URL that it goes to um, we can actually close this off here 
not necessary, but looks more complete. And if we want to extend it later, we can. Um, and that'll look good there. So now we can go ahead and navigate to a user. So let's go ahead and test our, our function here. So we could say IGBot, it'll try to log in, it won't work, but we could still nav to a user. Um, if you guys put your username and password, that'll work. So um, self.nav user, and now we can put um, that. And now we can go ahead and call this again. All right, and here we go. Pump boom, Instagram bot has no object attribute base URL. Um, Self.base URL, all right, we need to call this up here. So again guys, because Python is a primarily a, or an interpreted language, it's not compiled, then we need to have these attributes here um, declare before they are necessary. Okay, so that should work like that. And let's try again. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Login failed, self is not defined. Uh, we didn't pass self, we did pass self. Hmm, <laughs> that's interesting. Self to, oh, right, right, right. I should have called IG bot. Bots. Okay, go again. There we go, login fails, and we navigate. If we had proper username and password, login would succeed and we would navigate. So now guys, we wanna think, okay, so now we wanna do something like hit that follow button. So, and hit that subscribe button if you guys are watching. But, all right, so anyways, um, as far as that goes, we wanna go ahead and add a method that'll go ahead and follow a user. So we're just gonna call follow user um, with self and user. And what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna use this nav user function. Um, so we're gonna say self.nav user. So when we are following a user, we wanna go to that user's page, we wanna find the follow button, we want to, uh, with an X path or however else, whether selector we wanna use, and then we wanna go ahead and just click that button. So we're gonna say self.nav user to the um, user parameter that'll be passed in this follow user function. So that'll navigate to their page. And then we wanna go ahead and find that follow button. So we're gonna go ahead and um, do that by inspecting the page here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and log in to my account right quick so I can actually test this out. I should, oops, I don't even know why I'm password. Okay, that worked, <laughs> okay. So what we can do now here is go to that Gary V page and we can take a look at this button. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now this is what we're looking at right here. So the reason I did that is because they might have um, different setup. Uh, so we have follow. So XPath could work here. Um, I'm gonna have to put in my username and password to test this out here or create another Instagram account. And think of that. Um, so I might just put that in another file. And yeah, I think we're gonna do that actually. We'll see. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead here and take a look at this follow button. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and say, we could just use XPath. We could use one of these classes. Um, there's no guarantee that these classes are only used individually here. We could do a search for that and check it out if we want to. Um, but let's try XPath just because that's easier and faster. So here we go. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. So we can say uh, follow button is going to be self.driver.find element by XPath. We're going to pass that XPath right there. Um, and then we're going to see if we can do that. We can say follow button dot click. It'll be referencing that element that our driver found. And we'll see if that works. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm going to pull this page to another. I'm going to take this. Let's see. How do I want to add my username and password here? Uh, I could just. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. 
I'm going to add a file real quick, guys. I'll probably cut this out in a minute here. But I'm going to add a file real quick, and I'm just going to read that file in. Um, and that's going to be uh, how we're going to do things. So uh, well, just a second here, guys. Now is break time. We'll get some water. <laughs> I really need water. Um, and we can say... Um, two seconds, guys. The good news is that because of this, we're going to get to also learn how to read configuration in Python. So <clears throat> let's go ahead here and put this together. So good, good, good. So anyways, guys, I just accidentally clicked the file after I created it, but um, so this is what we're going to do. So now we're going to read that in. This is what you guys can do as well if you don't want to just hard code your username and password, which ideally you wouldn't if you wanted to reuse this class. So what we can say is import um, uh, config parser, which is actually going to be with uh, Python 3. The, it's a package that comes with it or a library that comes with it initially. And then what we can do here is say um, config equals... Um, we'll pass what um, config.ini and we can say config parser dot I think it's parse and I would say parser C parser equals config parser I gotta look at the documentation for this for a second config parser and now we can say c parser dot read we can say config dot ini uh, path oops that was dumb okay config path ah, path okay Sorry, I'm trying to speed this up. So, all right, we got config path, uh, config.ini, C parser, config parser, create the instance of the object, read the configuration, and now what we can do is reference that um, this way. So we can say config, really, hold on. So we can say is this, we can say C parser, um, and I used auth as a title section, and then I had username, and then password. And now we can go ahead and take these, and I'm just going to put them right here, actually. And then I'm going to do this. And we're going to put it right here. So we can say this. Uh, oops username and password and now I can just pass these when I create the object and that'll go ahead and put my username and password so let's see if this all works here so back to what we're doing we can log in we can navigate to a user's profile and hopefully we can follow user so let's go ahead and just call this follow user button or follow user method um, Follow user, and we're going to uh, we'll try this Gary V follow. So what should happen here? Oops, JavaScript. Well, what should happen here is we should go to that Gary V's profile. We should identify identify that follow button, and then we should click it. So let's see what happens here. Auth is not defined. Um, oops, you're right. Okay. See what happens here. There we go. We're launching. Logs in and cannot find the follow button. List object is no attribute. Click. Uh, let's see here. Find elements by XPath. 
So the, the interesting thing is how many elements are there. I think this would be the first element. So let's try this. Um, so it's getting us our list. Um, and so we can say, we this be follow buttons or follow. No, that's not really accurate. Um, follow list, follow text element list. Verbosity, guys. Verbosity. So we can say follow text element list at index of zero dot click. And now hopefully that'll click that button for us. We're going to see here in a minute. And we're actually going to print that out to follow text element list. Okay. So just in case that doesn't work, we're going to see um, length of this. So in case it doesn't work, we're going to see how long the list is and what the elements are in the list. So um, let's check it out. Okay, list index out of range. So it's an empty list, which means that this is not working. Um, so just a sec. Copy. So what did we use here? We used the X path this last time and the X path did not work. So what we can do here is we can try to find it by this class. Um, this is weird looking. So let's see here. See what we can do, guys. We're gonna we're gonna fix this up here. Um, so it looks like there are a few. One. Two, eh, it looks like that's not the one that we want to use just because there's too many. We could probably just X path select by that actually. Man, not easy, huh? Okay, let's try this. We're going to do this. So this, that star is saying basically find any element. Uh, we're going to only want to find buttons that contain contains uh, and we're going to put that text and then we're going to put follow and uh, I need to go ahead and actually use the double quotes so that we can appropriately use those single quotes and in, in, in there and then we got to go ahead and put this like that okay <clears throat> so do 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 that looks pretty good at a zero and so if the find elements okay so let's hope that that is the first element that pops up oops the follow, yeah, goddamn. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Let's try it out. Let's see what happens here, guys. So essentially, what we're doing now is we're following this user again, navigating to their page, finding that button. Hopefully, by the text that is within the button, that could return us as we're using this find elements by XPath. So it's going to return us a list of elements that have that text. Um, I'm just taking a quick look at the page. I'm assuming that that is the first button. Um, if it's not, we'll check it out and fix it up. Um, if it's not, we'll find out. Oops. Okay. So let's do this. So we're going to close this out. Uh, we're going to run this again. So here we go. We're launching. Log in. And it says um, the object of type web element has no length, right? So what did we get here? So we found, it looks like that was the only button, which is, which is good. So we're going to say good. Um, follow button, that was the only button that has follow text, which is actually probably to be expected. So follow button dot click. And now that should click. And now we're going to be able to follow this user. Ah, come back, Python 3. No, nope. man, I got this new keyboard, guys. So I'm Give me, a, give me a break. All right, there we go. No, oh, it clicked it. What just happened? Oh my God. Oh, it didn't authenticate. Okay, so now we need to actually sleep 
for a little while before we make before we do anything else here so essentially guys what happened is we didn't authenticate we tried to click that follow button so it redirected us to the login page so what we want to go ahead and do is add a little time.sleep um, using that time library that we imported uh, we don't want four probably two seconds and we'll go ahead and do this again okay, clear okay eventually my computer is going to crash here and close some of these instances Oh boy. Okay. Follow. <laughs> okay. There we go, guys. Nice and painful, but we got there. So now I might cut off the video here just because this took a while and we added that functionality. Um, we could do, we could just add the unfollow. So if you wanted to add unfollow, we could do something like this. We could just go ahead. We could add an optional parameter for unfollow, but we should be able to just do this. Um, let's see what it says. Should say, um, oops. What's this say? Try this again. So what we want to do is find what text is in there. And we can see following. So we want to use that. So we can say find all buttons with the text that have following. Okay. And the reason that this was coming back with the element is because I forgot I was actually finding the index. So that's why that we have the single web element instead of a list, which is good, but it looks so now we can say we can just say unfollow button. And again, guys, this is pretty suboptimal code we use here. Um, what we need to do, or what we could do instead is do like def um, user user follow action and then just pass a parameter so we could do it the function would look something like this def user follow action Ugh, god and we pass a parameter that'd be a name parameter something like um, unfollow and we could default it to false and then you would just do something like if unfollow equals true then we could go ahead and say um, um, user uh, follow act user I don't know action button text would equal on our following right so that's what the text of the button is when we want to <clears throat> when we want to actually unfollow the user so that is what we got there um, we could do that that would be better code reuse with a little bit more complexity. Um, so again, just trade-offs to think about enough unfollow user. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I think we're good. Uh, we could, I mean, do we want to add more functionality in this video? Probably not, but we could add it in the next video. So if you guys want to add more functionality like downloading media and other things like that, go ahead and just let me know in the comments and we'll post another video. Again, this is somewhat... Um, this is, it takes a little bit to do this here, guys, just because uh, testing with testing with selenium and checking that everything is working well like selenium is used for testing but actually testing selenium when you're using it for web automation is um, kind of a long drawn out process because you're relaunching your browser um, speaking of speaking of launching and relaunching your browser um, if you don't want to actually have a browser pop up you can go ahead and do chrome options and run a headless configuration but i don't know we won't we won't do that this video um, Let's just add some spacing, yada yada, make it look pretty. And now if you guys are again wanting to keep track of everything, we'll add some uh, quick documentation. So navigate to the users page. And we put something like args and user string, the username of the, of the Instagram user. And we can just go ahead and copy this. Put it here. Um, okay. And put something like follows a user. And then here we do something like args user. And again, I don't know if this is really optimal the way we're passing user in every single one. Um, we could probably find a better way to do that that would uh, work better Instagram user gram user okay 
curious how many times I misspelled a word. Should probably just keep track next time. But alright guys, um, unfollow as a user. So, that's what we got so far. Um, I'll actually, I'll link to this in the GitHub. I'll link to the complete thing in the GitHub repo. That has where all this functionality has been implemented. Um, you guys should be able to follow along with that pretty easily based on what we have so far. Um, there are a few other methods uh, that are added in there that I've, I can review with you guys if you want. Because I know a lot of people are probably, probably going to find this video that want Instagram bots for free that are working. And that's what we have here. So let me just go ahead and uh, pull that up for you guys real quick here. I can, just, I can just walk through it with you guys real quick. So if you want an Instagram bot um, and you... If you want Instagram bot and you just found this video this way, this is the way to find that. I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning, but if you're sticking out, here's a reward. You get the Instagram bot at the end. Um, so that's like right here. And again, you guys see some pretty familiar, familiar stuff. The Instagram bot, you have your username, password. Um, we go ahead and we log in. We have, this is for searching tags. Um, navigate to a profile page, unfollow a user, uh, download images from the user's profile. Like, and these are all kind of uh, pretty similar to exactly what we were doing. So um, go ahead and take a look through that. If you guys want the Instagram bot, leave any questions you have below. And again, thank you guys very much for watching. I know it was the first video back in a while, but there's been a lot of requests for uh, an Instagram bot. So I thought I would go ahead and do that with you guys. And again, um, any suggestions for new videos, put them down below. Um, if you're first time here, please do subscribe. We do a bunch of awesome stuff, build some really cool projects. So, all right, guys, peace.